This video will present an overview of the ISO 19650 part 1 document in relation to the concept of contact. So just a, a brief agenda, we'll do a bit of an introduction to the documents, uh, then I'll do a detailed overview of, of the part 1 documents looking at the different sections uh, and then I'll do a summary of them for the ISO. So just to define uh, or in the title of the documents, organization and digitization of information about buildings and civil engineering works, including building information modeling, information management using building information modeling, is the purpose of ISO 19650 part one, and that's the context in which, which we'll look at this uh, presentation. So just a bit of an introduction, why would you use ISO 19650? Uh, for efficiency, for designing, constructing and operating buildings, uh, for arranging and organizing logical structure of design information and construction information, and then for the processes of transition information uh, from design stage, you know, through construction stage and across the operational and maintenance stage uh, of building and, and civil engineering work. So in the ISO documents, there's part one and part two, uh, and the first document looks at the concepts and principles that, that uh, are overarching of, of, of the processes. Uh, and part two looks at the actual delivery phase, the actual processes of the design and construction information as it moves through uh, the managed uh, information stages. Um, and then as part of part two, we have the national annex uh, per country, um, and a lot of countries do adopt the national UK annex, um, just because the, the BS standards are, are as relevant in most countries, unless you have your own uh, annex in, in your uh, particular region. So the scope of the ISO 19650 part one document is defined as outlining the concepts and principles for information management uh, at a stage of development or maturity through a project. And then also described as building information modeling being used in this process. And at the end of this, you can offer recommendations uh, for a structure to manage information as well uh, as a result of, of following the ISO documents as well. And it is applicable to, to the entire life cycle of any built asset. Um, any building, you know, from a house to multiple houses to a hotel, hospital, or civil engineering projects as well, uh, from a bridge to wind farms to to anything that 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 can be used uh, as a built asset essentially, and then it can be adapted. The ISO document can be adapted to assets or projects of any scale and complexity. And just to go through some of the terminology uh, in the documents, including responsibility matrix. So this describes the involvement uh, of individuals by roles or functions in completing tasks or deliverables uh, required for, for that asset to be uh, constructed and operated. And then this can indicate accountability, uh, consultation and informing alongside uh, any obligations to complete the tasks or deliverables. And this is contained in the responsibility matrix. We also have other terminology such as spaces, and this is defined as a limited 3D uh, extent defined physically or notionally. We also have actors, which is an individual or an organization involved in the construction process. Appointments, which are agreed instructions to provide information on a, on a BIM level two project, essentially. Uh, appointed parties, which is the information source uh, provider uh, concerning the, the project or the built asset um, uh, or the providing the goods or the services uh, for that project. And then we have the appointing party uh, and the appointing party is also uh, known as the client or the owner or the employer. Um, and in this case, we, we'll refer to the appointing party as the client, uh, assuming that the client is, is in the, the, the uh, top end of, of, of driving the project. And then you have the delivery team, which are the lead appointed parties and their appointed parties. Uh, so this can be the structural engineer, the civil engineering firm, uh, the architectural firm, or if it's a multidiscipline company, obviously they're all the appointed team. And then they may have subcontractors uh, providing different services. So an architect might appoint a party to do interior design uh, or do some sort of fit out design, for example. And the same uh, goes for, you know, structural engineer, civil engineering may also appoint other parties and those parties can be appointed within their own company as well. Uh, but you'll always have a lead appointed party. So that that's, you know, usually the architectural team or, or uh, structural team or civils team could, could lead that on, a you know, a kind of simplified project like that. Then you have the task teams, which are the individuals that are, are brought together to perform a particular task. So, so to design a building or to design the earthworks uh, or to design the, the, the drainage system. You know, these are your task teams, whether it's civil engineering, structural or architectural. 
you have things called assets which are you know it can be a piece of furniture it can be an air handling unit uh, it can be a floor it can be a stairs it's anything that's of value uh, to the organization that will be uh, owning or operating the building and just some other terminology you'll come across as project information life cycle delivery phase which is obviously the design and the construction stage uh, you have operational phase when the building will be in use trigger events um, so these will be different events within a project for when you might need information. So when the planning is granted uh, by the local council, whatever the case may be, then the trigger event for that is uh, that's going to lead on to the, the tender documents being produced. Uh, so to think of those as, as almost key decision points as well uh, to pull in information. So some other terms related to managing information, you, you'll come across an OIR, Organisational Information Requirements, uh, and this just is relation to the, the company or the employer or the client uh, and what their goals are with the project if they want to capture all the information, all the installation information. Um, this will be included in a document called an OIR, and this is at a quite, quite a high level. Uh, an OIR just informs of their company goals and their intent of, of, of the project. And if that includes BIM, then, then all the better and their reasons for using BIM. Then you'll have an AIR, which is related to, to asset information requirements. So related to a specific piece of equipment or a unit, a piece of furniture, uh, a light fitting or an air handling unit, uh, or a certain element that needs to be maybe maintained within a project, windows or doors, etc. Uh, and re and these are related to the operation of an asset. Uh, so when do all the windows need to get replaced? When do the filters need to get changed in the air handling units, for example? Um, and then project information requirements or PIR, um, and this is in relation to the construction uh, and the design stage of, of, of the asset. What information is needed for the contractor on site to actually install that air handling unit or to lay that particular tile finish? Uh, what information do they need? You know, do they need the manufacturer information, specification information, uh, and even you know where to source the materials as well? And then exchange information requirements or an EIR uh, is the information requirements in relation to a particular appointment. Uh, so what is the exchange information? Uh, what is the type of format that files will be shared uh, from an architect to an engineer or from the engineer or the architect to the client or the employer? Uh, what is the information requirements? What format of um, DWG do you need to use? What version of Revit do you need to be using? That, that type of information uh, in your exchange information requirements. Other terms, information exchange, information model, uh, asset information model, um, and you, you'll come across these in, in, in the ISO documents as well. So project information model, this is an information model relating to the delivery phase of the project, so, so the design and construction phase. Uh, and then the PIM can also be used to express the, the intent of the design uh, or even a 3D representation of, of, of the building or the asset to be constructed. Uh, federations, this is the creation of a combined information model from various information sources. Uh, so of, as, as it says in the thing, this is, is pulling together uh, various information from, from different appointed parties or different consultants on the project uh, and federating their information. So even bringing together uh, the architectural model and, and the structural uh, engineering Revit model, for example, is, is, is known as federation. Uh, and the various information used during federation uh, can come from different task teams. So engineering team, architectural team, or, or civils team as well. What's an information container? So this is a structured information container. Uh, and this can be a file or a document, so, or it can be a subdirectory uh, information file, including a 3D model a document, a type of table or a schedule or agenda uh, or, or some subset of, of an information file uh, or even a chapter in a building regulation or a section in a building regulation uh, as well. Other terms. Uh, related to information management, you have status codes, uh, and this is metadata that it, it is attached uh, to your file or your document um, uh, describing the suitability of the content of that particular piece of information. Uh, is it being used for uh, work in progress? Is it being archived or is it being published? Uh, or is it just for coordination, for example? And then obviously BIM is, is the use of a, of a shared digital representation of a building uh, or a civil engineering project to enable that design construction and the operational process to, to form um, something you can depend on as a basis for making decisions throughout that process. Uh, a common data environment, or it's also something like BIM360 or a cloud storage solution, uh, is an agreed source of information for any given project or asset for collecting and managing information. And then some other terms, level of information needed, uh, capability, capacity, 
uh, and level of information need is just a, a structure which defines the, the magnitude and detail of information that you require for a certain object uh, or a certain piece of furniture or a certain floor finish uh, and the capability is related to the task team or the delivery teams or the architect's office do they have the capability do they have the revit skills do they have the software and the hardware uh, capable to deliver uh, a bim level 2 project if not do they need to upgrade systems do they need to train up their staff and then capacity is do they have the enough enough resources to perform those particular functions uh, do they have an in-house bim manager or bim coordinator with those qualifications uh, or skills relevant to perform that role as well and then section two kind of looks at uh, building an asset and project information and different perspectives when working collaboratively as well. And some of the main principles uh, include asset information models and project information models uh, as the structured sources of information that are needed to, to make uh, choices during the whole life cycle of, of a building or, or a civil engineering asset. Uh, and the AIM and PIM can include structured and unstructured information. Uh, and then the transfer of uh, the relevant information from say an asset information model and a project information model at the start and end of a project as well need to be considered um, and asset and project information is also valuable to to, to policy makers regulators uh, you know even even company investors or, or or property developers or insurers and other external parties as well and these should be applied in a way that is proportional and appropriate to the scale and complexity of the project. Uh, you don't want to be overproducing information, uh, but at the same time, on a more complex project, you don't want to be underproducing information. You want to ensure everybody has the correct amount of information uh, at, at the relevant stage. So defining the information needed and the output information model, some of the main principles, uh, creating an asset register, uh, and the client should specify their reasons for, for requiring certain information that they request for the air handling unit. Why do they want the installation mate? Uh, and that can be related to maintenance. They know when to replace it in 10, 15 or 20 years. They know when to replace the filters. And the same could go even go for a light bulb uh, or other installed equipment that may need required uh, maintenance. Um, other things to be considered are support for compliance and regulatory uh, responsibilities, uh, risk management, uh, support for business questions, um, you know, when do all the windows need to be replaced? What is the cost of investing in, in a more higher quality window now if we only have to replace them in 15 or 20 years as opposed to 10? Uh, the management and capacity and utilization of assets, uh, management, security and surveillance, uh, any support for future renovation that you may have information uh, or a building information modeling that will help you renovate in the future uh, by having that existing data. Uh, and then predicted and, and actual impacts as well of, of you know, replacing a lot of uh, windows. What, what's the sort of uh, impact that that's going to have on, you know, occupants of the building? Obviously, the building is going to be shut down for a time. Uh, but by having this information to hand, you can kind of predict uh, how that might happen uh, further in the future. And then for operations, maintenance and repairs, uh, replacement of, of objects, if it's windows, air handling units, floor finishes, uh, showers, piping, uh, any sort of mechanical equipment that may need to be replaced as well. And then decommissioning and disposable uh, disposal, you have all of that information uh, at hand as well, uh, and it helps you, you manage them. And the information delivery loop uh, within a project, some of the principles. Um, so information is needed for, for making key decisions throughout a project. Uh, information is specified progressively, uh, therefore at the early design stage you're not going to give the full specification for a wall finish or a floor finish uh, and you're only going to progress that information, you know, maybe when it gets to the detailed design stage or up to your construction uh, drawing uh, production as well. Uh, and then information requirements should be passed to the most relevant party. Uh, so making sure that you're not sharing information uh, with parties that don't need access to it, for example. And you always make sure that you, you have your point of contact uh, in the relevant parties as well. And then information exchanges involves the sharing and coordination of information through something called a camp common data environment, a cloud solution, or something like BIM 360. And then what about setting the information requirements and planning for the delivery of the information during the design and the construction stave, stage uh, of, of, a, of, of a project? Uh, so some of the general, general principles, um, information requirements specifying what you want, uh, plan the information delivery, how and when is this going to happen, then deliver that information. So deliver the drawings, provide the, the, the Revit model, uh, produce specification documents, and then check and approve it as well so it goes to a Q, qa and a qc um 
process and is there a way to automate that QA, QC process either through your common data environment or through some sort of approval workflows and then ensure that there's a, food a feedback loop as well in that if something gets rejected uh, that there's a process that it can get sent back to the creator of that particular piece of information for it to be rectified and then sent through the approval process once again. Then looking at the delivery team's capability and capacity some of the principles are that the, 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 the client should review the capability and capacity uh, of the potential delivery teams of the architect's office, of the engineering firm, of the civil engineering firm, uh, and any of the teams or the contractors or the subcontractors uh, prior to, to, to engaging them or awarding them the contract. And then that review can be completed in, in, in a number of steps. Uh, for example, where pre-qualification uh, is being utilised, uh, but it should be completed before the contracts uh, are awarded. Therefore, you know uh, their capability before you actually award them uh, the contract. Then looking at the information delivery planning, some of the principles, uh, how information will meet the requirements defined in the AIR or in the EIR. Uh, when information is going to be delivered, so dates attached to that, and initially with respect to the project stages or the particular assets, uh, and then management milestones, and later with respect to, to the actual uh, delivery dates of that particular piece of information, how the information is going to be delivered. Is it going to be a PDF drawing? Is it going to be shared through your common data environment? Is it going to be a Revit file of Revit uh, 2020? Or is it going to be a DWG uh, file or a DSXF file? So defining all of this uh, are very important as, as part of that process. And then how the information is going to be coordinated or federated uh, with information from the other uh, appointed parties, such as the other design consultants or the interior designer or the civil engineer on the project as well and then managing the collaborative production of information uh, so a commandant environment and workflow should uh, be implemented and this allows uh, information to be accessed um, by the people that need to, to or are required to, to undertake their particular role or function so the structural engineer is going to need access to the architect's model within the common data environment uh, and the architect is going to need access to the structural uh, Revit model as well within their uh, common data environment. And then issues in the information model should be avoided during the production of information. Uh, therefore, if it's avoided in-house internally uh, before it gets into the common data environment, therefore it's not making its way to site. Uh, but if you capture it in the common data environment, that's fine, but obviously try to capture it with your own QA and QC uh, internal workflows in the architect's office before a model gets released by doing certain checks on the model uh, and having a BIM coordinator or a BIM manager to perform those checks. Uh, or even if it's just a manual check uh, or if it's a if uh, Revit performs a, a model checker as well using um, using different functions within the software. And then, for example, fire protection materials being incompatible with the required fire rating of a wall. Uh, checking this stuff in-house uh, allows that um, that fault or that error not to make it to site. Uh, and then you're not going to have a compliance issue and have to remove or rebuild a wall for whatever reason. Then looking at the common data environment, the kind of solution and the workflow. Uh, so a common data environment sh should be used for managing the information uh, and any of the building or civil engineering um, and project delivery information as well during the, the, the design and the construction phase. Uh, and the common data environment uh, should support the information uh, management process as well. And then at the end of, of the project, the information is uh, required for the asset management and should be moved from the, the PIM to the AIM, the, the project information model, to the asset information model. And some of the principles uh, within a common data environment, you're going to have three states known as a work in progress, a uh, shared and a published. And these can be separate folders uh, or they, it can also be metadata as well. Uh, I prefer a folder structure. Uh, it works quite well with BIM 360. And then each information or file or document managed through that common data environment should have metadata. Uh, and as specified in the ISO document, that should be a revision code or in accordance with an agreed standard. Uh, if you're, you're, you're national annex in a different country, for example, not in the UK uh, or, or even in Ireland, uh, has a different agreed standard before the project goes ahead. And this will be specified in, in your BIM execution plan. Uh, and then applying something called a status 
access code uh, and then showing the permitted use of that information. Is it for construction? Is it for information only? Is it only for planning purposes? Uh, or, or what's the purpose of that? And there is a, a status code um, in, in the back of, of the ISO part two document status code list that you can adhere to. And then looking at the work in progress stage, this is used for information while it is being developed by its delivery or task team, and it should not be visible or accessible to any other task team. So in the Commandant environment, uh, having your own work in progress area for your design office uh, or your particular uh, role in the project. And it's important if the common data uh, environment is, is implemented through a shared system uh, so that everybody can control access and that the information is almost uh, just one source of truth that it's getting moved from work in progress area to a published or to a shared area to, to enable better management of that information and, and, and reduce any sort of duplication of information. The check review approve uh, transition of files uh, kind of looks at the it, it compares the information file against the agreed processes in your BIM execution plan and in, in your information delivery plans. Uh, and then it transitions should be made by uh, the owner or the task team or the author of that particular piece of information. So if it's uh, the architect releasing the, the architectural drawings, it should be that particular task team that performed that um, that function. Then the shared state. Uh, this covers uh, being able to uh, uh, enable uh, constructive and collaborative development of the particular piece of information. So uh, being able to get feedback from the structural engineer or the civil engineer on the architectural design. Uh, and this should be visible and accessible, uh, but should not be editable by other teams uh, within the project uh, as well. And that can be done in something like BIM 360 by controlling uh, permission levels. And if editing is required and information um, container or document or file should 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 be returned uh, back into your WIP or your work in progress state uh, for for updating it or rectifying uh, something that 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 requires an edit to it then the review and authorize uh, workflow uh, if an information file or document meets the information requirement its state is then changed to published um, and then if it's not meeting the information requirements, it should be should be uh, sent back to the, the work in progress state uh, and then it should be updated and then resubmitted uh, and then go through the approval process again. So it's all about quality assuring your information. Then the published state, uh, this looks at, at using the information that has been approved for use. Uh, for example, in the construction of a new project or in the operation of a building or a civil engineering asset. And then the PIM at the end of a project or the AIM during asset operation contains only information in the published form or in the archived state as well. And then the archived state, and this is used to hold the record of all the information documents that have been shared and published, and as, uh, as an, an audit trail as well of their progressed uh, creation and production uh, on the project. And then just looking at a summary of BIM according to, to ISO 19650, uh, it looks at the management of data it, it is different from, from information production and delivery. Uh, an information management process is started each time a new delivery phase or operational phase appointment is also made as well. So each time a new team come on board, uh, an, an information man management process is started again uh, for that particular particular appointment and then a common data environment workflow is used to support the collaborative uh, creation and production and management as well and sharing of and any exchanging of information between different parties or different uh, stakeholders within a particular project.